Thank you so much, Philip, for organizing another great event. And it's always very dynamic and very um, great to be part of it. So hopefully today I can sort of convince you that there is definitely a role in AI in strengthening the connection between the lecturer and learner. Um, so just to start off, really, uh, before I explain why we need this personalized adaptive learning and why AI has um, benefits in, in that, I wanted to sort of explain to you the context of why, where I sort of piloted the first study. So I work in a higher degree apprenticeship. Uh, we are known as Global Lifelong Learning Department, University of Kent, where we really deliver uh, apprenticeship courses, apprenticeship courses that are related and linked with university degrees, so bachelor or masters. And for those of you that aren't aware that the higher end degree apprenticeship are basically 80% associated with the work-based learning and 20% with the studying with university providers such as University of Kent. So really they are a full-time job and they are partnership between the university and the employer. So really they are tailored university programs and I think that we can all agree that behind the tailored university programs there is obviously the personalized adaptive learning that takes part for our students apprentices so they were created to, to bridge the gap between academic route and work route and um, you can find about our programs in the bottom link if you would like to know more about what what is an offer in university of kent but moving on to the uh, the role of uh, technology we obviously um, I had the pleasure, as, as Phil said, to present our development in this area of introducing the VR-based learning platform. So I think we've gone through a process of switching and replacing the traditional based, you know, in-person training and conventional learning and personal learning system with the e-learning platforms, like such as Moodle. So all our courses are delivered through the uh, e-learning platforms, such as Moodle. And also with the virtual reality help, we can deliver some specific trainings remotely as well. So linking you know in person like trying to find the alternatives to sort of replace or refine uh you, you can never replace fully in person training but if you can find a way to sort of bring the connection for distance learners because our our students are actually distance learners so we only have one week face-to-face -face teaching so for majority of the year we are provide you know we are dealing with that distance learning which obviously has to has to you know uh, be improved in terms of what technological uh, advancements can be used to kind of strengthen that connection between um, learner and and um, and uh, lectures? So I think I think Phil Phil mentioned that obviously um, the use of VR is very much something that we are embedding in our curriculum, and one of the assignments for the students obviously it's regarding the personal adaptive learning. So it is an emerging pedagogy approach that is enabled by smart learning environment platforms. So actually, VR is one of those techniques that we can create the virtual reality center for um, studying with students and inviting them to do a poster session, for example. As you can see in this image here, this is just uh, what uh, recently I've created for pharmacology students where part of the assignments was to present a poster with the uh, scientific laboratory um, pharmacological application, what they're doing in the work, and then everybody can join to this uh, virtual reality center via via PC version. They don't need to have a VR headset. Again, it has to be very much accessible. And at this point, we are not in the position that everyone has a VR headset. But hopefully we will be one day in that position. Uh, but I think what the idea behind was that we can actually create a meeting you know, um, a form of meeting with students that is very much relaxed and you know, nobody has to travel anywhere. We all just have to be at home with our computers and can join and can look at the posters, learn from each other. So I hosted that meeting um, and uh, obviously it, it requires a lecture presence, but the way we, we think that AI can replace this is that we have the AI-based avatars so those centers will be actually enriched with the AI avatars of, of lecture space. And then we can also tailor those avatars to the knowledge we want to pass to the students for the you know, specific learning outcomes, for example. So as you can see here, for example, in the phase one was to get used to meeting remotely with students. So, you know, we those of, of those students that already have the VR headsets are free to join and we can sort of look at the data, discuss things. This is all happening remotely. Um, but the biggest challenge is that, that maintaining the education standards, providing real-time support to learners via remote training across multiple locations, different times, is very difficult, as you know. So we have to sort of, you know, uh, sometimes we organize events, but not everyone can join at the same time. So having actually enrichment as, you know, in the form of AI, AI avatars, it allows us to be more flexible. So, you know, every lecture can have a personalized AI avatar, and we can also personalize the content, what we want to deliver for this. 
So really, as you can see here, um, the first sort of phase was to create this digital virtual center populated with digital twin AI avatars. And, you know, we can choose how we're going to look uh, as AI avatars, but obviously we are very much in power of deciding what content we want to do. And I think that's very important. So with the partnership with um, with Steve, who is the next speaker, we were able to sort of, you know, uh, make the use of the software he created. And I think what is very important about the software is very flexible. We as the lecturers deciding about the content and it's very flexible. I think, I think that is the key with, you know, introducing any technology to the learning that we are able to really control that in the sense that, you know, we know that the knowledge that is being passed by AI avatar has been checked for us. And everyone knows that when we create, you know, as a module convenance, we create the content, we do have to write things. And those things that we write to create, you know, um, Moodle content of our um, of our modules, we can then sort of as a text embed in the, our AI avatar. So pretty much half of the job is done anyways. Um, so as you can see here, um, you can see uh, sort of information about the exams. Um, in the um, virtual reality center created for the student, you can also see my avatar. So really, the difference between those two approaches is that obviously if we create a virtual reality space for the students and invite them over, they obviously, because they require a lot of flexibility, we cannot always have all of them at the same time. That's the, that's the current problem, you know, that we have to allow maximum flexibility. So by inviting them to the space that actually nobody is in, it can be a little bit, you know, creating the, the feeling of loneliness rather than, you know, increasing the uh, contact between the lecture and learner. But actually, when you look at the same environment and here there's my avatar waiting for them saying, hello, this is my name. Do you want to know more about the um, exam of, you know, of the pharmacology module, or would you like to look at the specific topics for the learning outcomes of this module? And there's someone there to greet, to say hello. So I think that 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 in that way, that's already creating that bond between lecture and learner, and also, you know, facilitates students to ask questions that perhaps they wouldn't ask normally. Um, so you know, it is really uh, increasing that contact. So. In this video here, we can see, for example, that student's perspective. They enter the virtual reality center. They can see all the posters. They can see the information, but unfortunately, they cannot see anyone. But in this video, you can see the difference that the AI avatar makes. You know, there's someone there. Someone they are familiar. I'm not sure if you could, um, obviously, you can ask any questions. Uh, to the avatar, you can, you know, um, and you can, as I said before, you can tailor those avatars to the content you really require. So, for example, here, you know, you can have a conversation analysis using the software. So you can say, um, how are you? What's your name? What are you doing? For example, what is pharmacology? Define pharmacology. We know that AI is giving quite a lot of information for students, but they are not always tailored to the content and learning outcomes that we would like, you know, students to to remember, and we know that we are actively, you know, very much involved in the content building. So this, the education cannot exist with AI only. They need specific, you know, specialists in the area that they can actually tailor those AI avatars. And I think combining those both, it's a very powerful tool for um, personalized adaptive learning. And, you know, student-centered approach is what lies in the heart of personalized learning, but it, is, it, it does require help from technology platforms. So um, I think, you know, I believe that in the future, you know, we can sort of replace or embed what you can see on the left side. This is normally what students see when they draw e-learning platform on the Moodle. They see my picture, they see the module content, they have to sort of scroll and find information. Sometimes they find very difficult to find information. And we obviously working towards making it more transparent for students. But having a virtual reality center saying, you know, it's actually the, the way you present information to students that makes a difference and having the AI avatar built in that they can automatically straight away 24 hours per day ask any question with the, you know, the content that you've already built up on the Moodle platform will be a fantastic way forward. Thank you so much. Amazing, thank you. And absolutely bang on time as well. Oh, you get extra <laughs> points for that. Well done. Perfect. I was trying. <laughs> That was a really interesting talk. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions and I think someone's just put their hand up. So, Steve, if you'd be able to give the, the first person um, permission to unmute themselves. And while you're doing that, I will just ask a question that Richard has put in the chat. And I think it was referring to um, when you showed one of your slides, Richard asked, is, was that a transcript of the speech um, or do students type? There was a transcript, transcript of the speech. Yes. Great. Thank you. And 
I believe um, we had a hand up. Are you able to ask your question? No? OK, well, I have a question, if that's OK. Um, looking at the presentation, it's so amazing. It really is. Um, and I, I was just wondering, where would you kind of recommend someone who's a kind of a novice in this area? Where would you recommend that they, they start? What's the kind of the first place to go to to kind of learn a bit more about this? Obviously, it's great to see your, your video. But have you got any tips or any resources that you could point people towards that might be able to give them kind of a few more steps in in that direction if they're looking to kind of maybe apply something like that. Yes, I think that you know from the perspective, obviously we collaborate with Steve, so he will be able to answer those questions to you where to start. But I think um, from the perspective of you know um, its application, we are still learning very much about that. And just to highlight, you know, that the fact that you know we are using it, we are implementing, and we are just seeing what is really very much needed and what is not perhaps needed. So there's quite a lot in between, but, um, you know, we are very lucky that we, Steve is also, um, you know, part of University of Kent and, you know, and, and sort of helps us through the designing that content. But um, I, um, if you want to have any specific questions in terms of that, Phil, I'm sure that Steve will be happy to answer after his presentation. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think that there are any hands up. Uh, oh, no, we do have one hand up. So hang on a second. Perfect. We have, um, I think, Julius. I can see that. There we go. Um, if you bear with me one second. OK, you should be able to ask your question and unmute your mic if you'd like to. Hello. Hi, Julius. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I think the software looks great. And uh, yeah, it's something that can be yeah i think adopted you know mm -hmm. and i think it will improve learning uh but yeah so one thing i can think of i think that means it will cut lecturers jobs basically that's number one because you will not need as many lecturers as we have now if the system is effective and number two i think uh one of the issue with um AI or generated text or generated content generally is hallucination. Have you taken that into consideration? Thank you. Yes, so I think that, you know, uh, with the Steve's presentation, he'll be able to sort of explain more about that. Um, yes. I can see that somebody had a question about the personalized, how do you personalize AI? Are you able to 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 answer that one, Blanca, or we we can happily kind of move on to Stephen's presentation? Yeah, I think he would actually in his slides he's explaining that, so I'm not okay. sure whether it's just worth to take that forward um, yeah, with the question. So I don't want to ignore the question, but it will be definitely answered quite you know throughout Steve's presentation. So I don't want to repeat what he's about to say. <laughs> no problem. Um. Okay. Well, in that case, if we are uh, we're now kind of pretty much at time. So I suggest that we kind of move on to to Stephen, if that's OK. But yeah, if, so we just um, I wanted to add, sorry, Phil, to the AI and, you know, how do we personalize this? As I oh, think of course, sorry. Maybe, yep. Sorry, that wasn't maybe clear, but obviously with the module convenors, we first create the content as academics and that the content is very much tailored to the learning outcomes of each of each module. And then you are able to then, um, you know, um, personalize your AIs. So you personalize with the text so that basically it's really up to the lecture module convener to choose what they want the avatar to know and what they will what information and knowledge they will pass to the students which is very important so there's no risk of you know um students going to an environment and perhaps being exposed to ai that maybe it's not really associated with the learning outcomes maybe it's just too general quite often you know when we type something in the chat gtp is a little bit too general um, so we know we know when we learn specific um, contents like pharmacology, we want students to use specific nomenclature and you know names and words, and we expect that as a part of the learning outcome. So it's, it is the, we are 100% empowered to tailor what we want Avatar to know and what to pass to the students. Great, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Blanca.